Welcome to tutorial 1, Building a Plant Layout in GPSX. A corresponding tutorial manual is available from the GPSX help menu should users prefer to follow along with the written instruction document. The specific goals of this tutorial are to teach new users how to build a simple plant layout, how to set up input controls and output graphics, and how to run interactive simulations. The first step is to open a new file in GPSX and select the comprehensive Mantis 2 library option from the drop-down menu. Turn on the grid on the drawing board by going to View Display Grid on the toolbar. Next, locate the process table on the left-hand side of the window. Here, model objects are separated into groupings of like objects. Within the influent group, left-click on the wastewater influent model object and drag the object onto the drawing board. Drop the object by releasing the mouse button. Repeat this process for the plug flow tank icon within the suspended growth processes group and the circular secondary clarifier object in the secondary clarifiers process group. There's a lot of white space appearing on the drawing board. Click on the locator button. To zoom in on the plant layout, left click and draw a box around the process objects. When the mouse is released, the size of the drawing board will be reflective of the area contained within the red box within the locator window. The next step is to connect the process objects. Move the pointer over the wastewater influent object connection point. The mouse pointer should change to a connecting arrow. Once this arrow appears, left click to anchor this line and drag the pointer to the connection point of the plug flow tank. When the connecting arrow reappears, release the mouse button to complete the connection between the influent object and the plug flow tank. In a similar manner, create a connection between the effluent of the plug flow tank and the influent of the secondary clarifier, as well as a connection between the underflow of the secondary clarifier to the return flow point of the plug flow tank. GPSX does not allow for invalid flow connections, will display an invalid sign if an incorrect connection is attempted. Each model object and stream has a name associated with it. To show or hide these labels, click on the Labels button on the main toolbar. We will now make edits to these names. Right-click on the Wastewater Influent object and label the object Influent in the output stream WWINF. For the Plug Flow model object, Label it aeration tank, the recycle stream RAS1, the overflow MLSS, and the pump stream can remain as default. Notice that since the influent stream to the plug flow tank is the effluent stream of the influent wastewater object, it adopts the same naming convention. For the circular clarifier, label the object as final clarifier 1, the overflow FE, and the pump flow WAS1. The underflow is already labeled RAS1, as this recycle stream was specified in the aeration tank model object. If any difficulty occurs while setting up this plant model, you can always create a new model layout or delete and re-add specific model objects. To delete a model object, left click on it so a red box appears and press the delete button on your keyboard or go to edit, delete. You will be prompted to confirm deletion of this model object. This is a good time to save the model. Do this by going to file, save as, and naming it appropriately. Model objects may have more than one possible model that define the dynamic behavior of the model object. More information regarding this is available in the technical manual. We will now verify the default models before proceeding. Right-click on the influent object and go to Models and ensure that the COD states has been selected. For the plug flow model, verify that Mantis 2 is the only model available, and for the secondary clarifier, verify that the simple 1D model has been selected. We will now make changes to the properties of these model objects. First, we will change the influent composition. Right-click on the Influent object and go to Composition, Influent Composition to open up the Influent Advisor. Change the total COD entry from 430 to 380 gram COD per meter cubed and the total TKN entry from 40 to 35 grams nitrogen per meter cubed. Note that these values are now highlighted in blue to indicate that they have been changed from the GPSX defaults. Accept this form before proceeding. 
Change the secondary clarifier wastage rate by right-clicking on the clarifier object. Move to the input parameter submenu and select operational. Change the pump flow entry from 40 to 60 meter cube per day. Click accept to save these changes. Now select the plant-wide properties button on the toolbar and change the liquid temperature to 22 degrees Celsius. Save the plant layout. You have now successfully built and fully specified this plant layout. We will now switch to simulation mode by pressing the button at the top right of the screen. This starts the build process of the model to create an executable program for scenario analysis. The speed of this depends on the complexity of the model and the speed of your workstation. Once the build step is completed, you will be left in the simulation environment. We will now create an input controller for the influent flow variable. Access the parameter by right-clicking on the influent object and select the flow data item from the flow submenu. Drag the influent flow variable to the input control section of the workspace. A new tab called input1 has been created for this control. Double-click on this tab name and change it to flow control and press enter. You can edit the input control properties by clicking on the input controls properties button on the controls toolbar. An entry form window will be displayed. The minimum and maximum values selected for the slider range are appropriate, so we will not make any changes. It is not necessary to enter a value in the delta column, as we will use a slider type control which does not require a value for this attribute. Accept this form. You can test the slider control by dragging the small slider knob. Note that the influent flow value will change the value displayed on the slider control. Before proceeding, use the reset button at the far right of the slider to move the slider back to the default position of 2000 meter cube per day, or type 2000 into the box. We will now create appropriate output displays prior to running the simulation. Notice that in the output section, there are quick display items for each of the process objects. You can access these easily by simply double-clicking on the model object. To create a new output graph, click on the New Graph tab button on the Outputs toolbar to create a blank output tab. Create a new graph of the influent flow by right-clicking on the influent object and select Output Variables Flow and drag the flow variable to the blank area of the new tab to create a new XY graph. Next, move the cursor over the effluent point of the final clarifier. When the cursor is positioned correctly, it will change to a connecting arrow to indicate that you have located a connection point. Right-click and select Output Variables, Composite Variables from the pop-up menu, and drag the total suspended solids output to the same graph. Select the Auto Arrange button to resize the output window. Click on the Output Graph Properties button, rename the graph to Influent Flow and Effluent TSS. The Auto Scale feature can be used to allow the Y axis to automatically set an appropriate max value depending on the data being displayed. Other output graph types other than the XY type are available. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will keep Auto Scale clicked off and we'll keep the graph as the XY type. With the max fields unlocked, enter a minimum and maximum value for each variable. Use 0 and 10,000 meter cube per day for flow and 0 and 150 mg per liter for total suspended salts. With the controller and output graph set up, you are now ready to run the simulation. Enter in a stop time in 20 days in the simulation toolbar at the bottom of the screen. Start the simulation by pressing the start button. While the simulation is running, adjust the flow slider and assess the effect on the effluent suspended salts concentration. If the simulation proceeds too quickly, you can add a delay to artificially slow down the simulation. We will now take a more detailed look at the plant performance. Access the composite variables on the clarifier by right-clicking on the object and selecting from the output variables, composite variables and layers. Drag the total suspended solids and layers item to the blank area to the right of the existing output tabs. By dropping it there, a new tab is automatically created with the desired graph. Since this variable is actually an array of values denoted by the fact that it has an ellipse, then the graph that is created is by default a bar chart with array elements along the x-axis. Right-click on the output graph and select the output graph type item. Select the bar chart horizontal type for this graph. In Graph Properties, rename the graph to Final Clarifier Solids Profile and change the max value to 5000 mg per liter.
Otto arranged the graph to fit it into the output area, set the flow controller to 2000 meter cube per day, and run the simulation for 10 days at steady state. View the effect that the flow has on the solids profile by increasing the flow rate. Reset the flow to 2000 meter cube per day and run the simulation and open the Sankey window. Here the flows through the model are displayed. Notice that a stream with a higher flow rate displays a wider arrow. In this example, the flows out of the clarifier illustrate this. Effluent stream has a much bigger arrow than the tiny arrow exiting the pump flow. You can change settings and output variables using display, variable, and Sankey features on the top of the window. The Sankey diagram can be exported using the exports features. You have now completed the first tutorial from the GPSX tutorial series. If you ran into any difficulties working through this tutorial, you can refer to the corresponding tutorial manual and user manual.